Hi everybody. Say, so I just want to share a video with you that I thought was very well done and the information in it is just outstanding. You know, in fact, the, the information that's in this video is uh, the things that I kept on asking uh, people various questions about because they need to think about this uh, if they're out cleaning and disinfecting homes or offices. So uh, I think you're going to find the video very informational and helpful. So um, go ahead and watch. Hello everyone. Hope this finds all of you safe and healthy. I want to spend a few minutes today discussing the need for increased disinfection to keep our locations clean and safe for our employees, clients, and business partners, but specifically how increased cleaning and disinfection can and will impact your fixtures, furniture, floors, and finishes throughout your space. As previously discussed, in order to properly disinfect, we must first clean the surface to remove contaminants, then apply our disinfectant, allowing it to dwell for the appropriate amount of time, and then ultimately remove or allow it to dissipate. The challenge today is many of the surfaces and finishes we will be disinfecting daily may not be designed for the volume of moisture and chemicals that will be used throughout the day in our new standard of clean. As an example, if you clean and disinfect our brushed aluminum or wooden display table three times a day, and your disinfectant requires a 10 minute dwell time, your disinfectant would remain saturated on that surface for upwards of 30 minutes a day, three and a half hours a week, or 182 hours a year in a seven day a week operation. It is only a matter of time before your table will begin to rust, rot, and or the finish deteriorate. In order to proactively prevent the potential for severe surface deterioration, you should partner with a professional cleaning company and determine the following. One, Review all the manufacturer's specifications for both your hard and soft finishes to determine any chemical sensitivities or chemicals to be avoided. Two, review the technical and safety data sheets for both your general cleaning agent as well as your disinfectant. Look at the information that will be considered impactful to both environmental surfaces as well as human surfaces like eyes and skin. Three, identify if you have compatibility with all of your surfaces or if there's a potential to cause damage. Have you identified cleaners and disinfectants with short dwell time to limit exposure? Will you need a variety of cleaners and disinfectants or will you only need two? Four, in addition, understand that not all disinfectants are neutral pH balanced and can either be heavily acidic or basic in pH value. They can contain components that have the potential to damage or deteriorate certain surfaces with repeated exposure over time. Your cleaning services partner can help you determine the best strategy to avoid this. It is imperative that everyone begins to consider these potential challenges as we reopen our locations. We each must have a plan in place to safely reopen while ensuring our services support the longevity of our assets. Please know we are here to help. Should you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I thank you for listening and have a great day. Well, I hope you thought that was helpful. Uh, you know, I thought I had a lot of good information on it. That's why I wanted to share it with you. And uh, so when you're out there doing your cleaning and disinfecting, keep these things in mind because you can do damages to surface, you know, surfaces depending on the type of disinfectant you're using, the dwell time. Um, so a lot of things to think about, but just make sure that you check all your boxes. Make sure you're doing things safe. Uh, you don't want to have a claim uh, that you've damaged some surfaces. Uh, in a home and or, or home and or, or office. So thanks for stopping by and uh, we'll see you again.